Hello everybody, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Our expert today will be talking about planning and recommendations of virtual networks. So let's get into the video. The first one is address space. So when creating a VNet, you must specify a custom private IP address space uh, using the public and uh, private, which is part of uh, RFC 1918 addresses. Azure assigns a resource. Uh, Azure assigns resources uh, in a virtual network uh, a private IP address from the address space that you assign. For example, if you deploy a VM uh, uh, in a VNet with the address space 10.0.0.0/16, the VM will be assigned a private IP like 10.0.0. .0. 0.4. I'm not sure how many times I said it's zeros, but it's 10.0.0.4. So subnets, uh, subnets enables you to segment the virtual network into one or more subnets and allocate a small portion of the virtual network address space to each subnet. You can then deploy Azure resources in a specific subnet. So this is very similar to the traditional networking. Subnets allows you to segment your VNet address space into segments that are appropriate for organization's internal network. Regions, uh, VNet is scoped to a single region or location. However, multiple virtual networks from different regions can be connected using uh, virtual network peering or uh, VPN. Subscription, uh, VNet is scoped to a subscription. You can implement uh, multiple virtual networks between uh, within each Azure subscription and Azure region. You can also make them uh, make uh, the VNets in one subscription to communicate with another subscription again using uh, VNet peering or through VPN gateways. Uh, other than that, uh, regions. So all Azure resources are created in a region and subscription. So a resource can be uh, can only be created in a virtual network that exists in the same region and a subscription as a resource. You can however connect virtual networks that exist in different subscriptions and region. So when deciding which regions to deploy resources in, uh, you should consider where your consumer, uh, where your consumers of the resources are physically located. Uh, first thing that we uh, always think about is latency. So latency is the round trip time that is taken by if I So if uh, This person is requesting for a website here the request took uh, 8 milliseconds to reach there and another 8 milliseconds to get a response So the total is 16 milliseconds is the total time taken uh, for that request to get fulfilled. So similarly, if the server is too far from the physical location, if I'm trying to access something from, let's say in East US or West US from my location in Southeast Asia, uh, you, should, you, sh you will see some latency associated to that. So make sure that uh, you know, you're deploying the resources closer to your consumers. Secondly, choose a region um, that aligns the requirements so you have to think about like do you have data residency compliance or resiliency requirements if so choosing a region is more critical because uh, you might not want to uh, not might not you shouldn't be uh, saving your data in another region so let's say if uh, you're working for a government organization or a military uh, organization then uh, you might have uh, you will have some uh, data residency or compliance issues where you will not be able to store data outside your country so make sure that uh, if if you if your if the organization that you're working for has any sort of uh, compliance or uh, resilience requirements then do you require a resiliency across azure availability zones within the same region for the resources you deploy that's another question so you can deploy resources such as virtual machines to a different availability zone within the same uh, virtual network. So if even if it is, of a, you know, you should be thinking about uh, resiliency across availability zones as well. Uh, 
uh, that's that's another uh, some things that I would like you to consider before uh, you know when to deciding um, when you create uh, whether you to create a virtual network or multiple virtual network for a subscription uh, first thing is um, do uh, any organizational security requirements exist for isolating traffic uh, into different uh, virtual networks so do you need isolation so you can choose uh, to connect virtual networks or not if you connect virtual networks you can implement a network which are virtual NVA like a virtual appliance such as firewall to control the traffic between uh, virtual networks so first thing you have to understand is there any isolation required if isolation is required then you should consider deploying a NVA or a firewall something like that uh, secondly uh, do any organizational requirements exist for isolating uh, virtual networks into different subscriptions or uh, regions so that's something you have to find uh, do we need multiple subscriptions for isolation then how many network interfaces and private IP address do you require in a virtual network so how many IPs so each network interface has uh, one or more private IP address assigned to it uh, there are limits to the number of network interfaces and the private IP address that you can have within a virtual network so uh, you will uh, you will think about the CIDR value and decide how many IPs you want uh, when you decide the address space that's the time you have to think how many IPs uh, you need so then the next question I would ask is uh, do you want to connect your virtual network to another virtual network or uh, let's say on premise or vnet to vnet so this is something another question that would come so you may choose to connect some virtual networks to each other or on premise network but uh, not others is each virtual network that you connect to another virtual network or on premise network must have a unique address space so they shouldn't be overlapping at all each virtual network has one or more public or private IP address ranges assigned to its uh, address space. An address range is specified as CIDR. So you have to think whether you need a hybrid or a VNet to VNet communication is there. If it is a VNet to VNet, then you have to decide whether you should go for a VNet peering or should you go for a VPN. Then if it's hybrid, you should think about a VPN or express route. So that depends upon what kind of bandwidth the customer uh, requires. The next question uh, is like, do you have any organizational administration requirements for resources in different virtual networks? So uh, if so, uh, you might separate uh, resources into a separate virtual network to simplify permission assignments to individuals in your organization or to assign different policies to different virtual networks so how you want to administer the virtual network so these are some of the questions um, that would help you to decide uh, the need for uh, how many vnets you need so you do you need network security uh, you can filter network traffic to and from resources in a virtual network using NSG and NVAs uh, you can control how Azure routes traffic from subnets. You can also limit uh, who in your organization can work with the resources in virtual network. Connectivity. So you can connect um, um, a virtual network to other virtual network using network peering uh, or to your on-premise network using an Azure VPN gateway. So peering, uh, when using virtual network peering, the virtual networks can be in the same or different supported Azure regions. The virtual networks can be um, in the same or different Azure subscriptions, even if the subscriptions are belonging to different Azure Active Directory tenants. Bandwidth between these resources in a virtual uh, network period uh, in the same region and uh, is the same as if the resources were in the same virtual network. So when you peer, uh, when you peer to networks, resources in uh, subnet A will be able to uh, ping or communicate with the resources in 
not subnet vnet b uh, vnet a and vnet b once they appear uh, resources in vnet a uh, will be able to communicate with uh, vnet b or vice versa vpn gateway you can use azure vpn gateway to connect to a virtual network uh, to your on-premise network using a site-to-site -site vpn or using a dedicated connection with uh, azure express route uh, you can combine peering and a vpn gateway to create hub and spoke network where a spoke uh, virtual networks connect to the hub virtual networks and the hub connects to the on-premise for example so we have uh, seen this architecture earlier as well uh, where you have a vnet here you have a vpn gateway which is connected to your uh, on-premise uh, this vnet is actually uh, peered to vnet b and this is peered to vnet c so uh, which means that if there is a resource in vnet c wants to communicate to a resource in the on-premise it will can use this gateway if the allow gateway transit is enabled so uh, if they can use this uh, particular gateway to reach this resource similarly if there is a vm which is here uh, and the on-premise users can reach to that vm uh, via this particular gateway and then use the peering and policies uh, Azure relies a lot on the RBAC roles uh, to control the access to resources uh, permissions um, uh, permissions are assigned to a scope in the following hierarchy so we have seen like it will be at the management group level then it will come to the subscription uh, then to the resource group finally to the resource so this is how permission is assigned so to work with Azure Virtual Network and all of their uh, ca related capabilities such as peering, NSG, service endpoints, route table, you can assign members of your organization to the built-in uh, owner, contributor or network contributor roles, then assign the role to the appropriate scope. Recommend a solution for network addressing and uh, name resolution. So when uh, resources are deployed in virtual networks, uh, need to we need to resolve domain names to internal IP addresses. Uh, we can use three methods. First one is Azure DNS, private zones, Azure provider name resolution, or name resolution using your own DNS server, which might forward the queries to the Azure provider DNS servers. The table that you see on the screen right now illustrates scenarios and corresponding name resolution and uh, solutions. So name resolution between, me, uh, between VMs located in the same virtual network or cloud services uh, in the same cloud service. So you can use a DNS, DNS private zone or um, Azure provided name resolution as they are in the same virtual network. Uh, you don't need to add any uh, additional name servers for that. So name resolution between VMs in different virtual networks or raw instances in different cloud services. So here you can use private zones or you can use a, a, your own DNS server. So since they are in different virtual networks, so one name should, the name in one VNet will not, will not be resolved good in the other VNet. So FQDN is the only option here. And the, the other one you can use host name because the domain suffix will be added to it as they're part of the same VNet. But here you can use, you have to use a complete FQDN. So name resolution from an Azure app service, which is a web app function or boat, uh, using virtual network integration to roll instances or VMs in the same virtual network. So in this scenario, we have to use uh, custom managed DNS servers forwarding queries between virtual network for uh, uh, the resolution. So here also FQDN. Name resolution from app service web apps to VMs in the same virtual network. So since it is a web app uh, to the VMs, we have to use a, a customer managed DNS or your own DNS for forwarding queries from the virtual networks. Name resolution from app, uh, app service web apps in one virtual networks to VMs in another virtual network. Here also you have to use customer managed. So most of the scenarios you need to have are your own DNS. Uh, then uh, if there, there, there are the scenarios where you can use uh, Azure private zones as if they are in different VNets and uh, communication between VMs. 
So guys, I hope you really liked our session and if you have any kinds of doubts, you can please comment down below and our team will reach out to you and do not forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you are really intrigued by the kind of terms used and you want to learn more about it, then we have something really, really special for you. We have this free class on Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect certification that is AZ305. And if you want to learn more about it, then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. In this session, in this free class, you'll be learning about why you should be learning Azure Cloud, your paths to learn Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification. You'll be getting to know the difference between AZ303, AZ304, AZ305, and a lot many insightful things. So if you want to do this, then all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. After that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now and select your availability according to the event date mentioned. Add your name, add your phone number, add your email, and every detail will be conversed to you via our mail. And after that, just proceed ahead. On the extreme light, you'll be seeing this kind of link. So just Copy this link, save it to your calendars, and I will see you in the next class. Till then, take care and keep hustling.